There we are. Here's one. There we go. I need to be able to reach this. I have it a lot closer to me than usual. Hi! How is everybody doing? Let me just double check that I'm live in the right place. Yay! Okay, you can hear me too. Wonderful. Hi! Happy full moon in Leo! We're going to talk about the moon today. We're going to talk about uh, Pluto in Aquarius and entering the age of Aquarius. Good afternoon, Yolanda. How is my beautiful friend? It's so good to see you. So yeah, we're going to talk about all the big things that are going on astrologically. I am not an astrologer. I have some articles pulled up that I'm going to pull pieces and ideas from. We'll get into that. We'll get into our collective um, a full moon in Leo um, reading. And But before that, I would like to do uh, this week's lesson, which is Lesson 8 in Living Magic. And Lesson 8 in Living Magic is all about expecting magic on a daily basis, making room for magic and magical things and miracles to happen, and and how we can, and how that benefits us, right, to be expecting magic and miracles. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Let me find... You are wonderful. I'm so happy to hear that. Anyone who's watching, uh, please say hello so I can I can connect with you even just for a moment. Um, if you are watching on the re replay, please comment and let me know that you are here so I can say hello and just connect with you for a moment. Um, I had put a a video in this group a couple of weeks ago. It's pinned to the top of the group. Uh, it is called it is called Let's Talk About Purpose. And um, in that video I speak about this idea that we don't find our purpose by looking at the things that we just that we like to do, the things that we want to do. We don't find our purpose by looking at what we do for a living or what others told us that we were good at or even what we think we're good at. And I go on to talk about how purpose can be a much broader thing. It's not really what you decide to do for a living, although your business, your what you do to make money can be part of your purpose. It's about finding the underlying theme in your wounding and in the pain points in life. Um, and by doing so, you, you see an underlying theme, your, your major fear or your major, major lesson to be learned. And this is your purpose that underlies everything else that you do. And for me, mine was the fear of being alone. And it was the fear of loneliness. And I look at the antonym of being lonely, and that's community. And so it's my purpose to cultivate a community. And a community that is connected. So the opposite of... Um, loneliness would be community and connection. And so it's my ultimate purpose under everything that I do in my life to, to cultivate this kind of a community. And, and it's really starting to come together beautifully here. And I am just over the moon um, grateful that you're all here. And more than that, I am over the moon honored to be spreading this message on behalf of, really on behalf of the divine, on behalf of the in, of the infinite, on behalf of all of our oversouls, all of our, um, our collective consciousness, our collective, um, the collective unseen that connects all of us. And so let's get into our living magic for the week. Our living magic lesson is all about how to really set the conditions for the right things to appear in our lives, right? Or to happen in our lives. Those, um, how to set the conditions to have those, um, those moments of synchronicity um, and to be able to not only attract to us, but be able to notice the, um, the opportunities that show up for us. And all of our opportunities and gifts in life 
um, usually stem from a challenge or something that we would perceive as a problem right and so part of the magic of being able to live a magical life a daily magical life that really feels magical in which you really can expect miracles and magical things to happen on a daily basis part of that is being able to recognize what might appear as a challenge or a problem as the gift that it is right and to be expecting magic to come out of that to be asking that question that question of instead of why is this happening to me that question of what do, what am I learn what can I learn from this what is this teaching me where's the lesson in what's going on right now what am I being asked to acknowledge or to let go of where am I being asked to level up here Am, am I seeing, um, am I looking in a mirror because the outside is what happens to us in our life and the things that go on around us are a reflection of what's happening in our inner world, right? And so what is moving through me that I'm in the way of or what is this showing me about myself? that I need to actualize, that I need to be aware of, right? And so this whole journey uh, for us, that we're all on together in our own way and together, um, both at the same time, is this journey of self-actualization, of living um, a conscious life, living life on purpose, as my mentor Deborah would say. It's all about learning how to intentionally create the kind of circumstances that we desire on a regular basis in our life um, while learning how to let go of the things that no longer serve us, which is hard because they're addictions. Even the ones we don't perceive as addictions. Our bodies even get addicted to trauma and stress and feeling specific emotions and having specific patterns of reactions to the things that go on in the outside world, emotional reactions. And even our thoughts do that to us, where they elicit reactions in our bodies. And we know now through science that whether something happens in real life that's upsetting or that's scary, or whether we just imagine that it's happening, our body doesn't know the difference. And so therefore, our nervous systems are going through a very real life experience of experiencing awful things every time we let our minds get out of hand, right? And so when these circumstances and situations come up that are repetitive, instead of beating ourselves up and being like, I, I'm, you know, I'm doing it again here, I go thinking negative thoughts or, you know, there's nothing wrong with a thought pattern there's as long as you're not identifying to it you don't even have to believe it a lot of the times they're not even true our thoughts and so really looking at it from a perspective of where you get to choose whether or not you're going to entertain it whether or not you're going to buy into it whether or not that's even accurate for you and then you you get to rewrite that and so just because I'm not one of those people that believes if you have a thought, it manifests right away. I'm the kind of person that believes that these thoughts that we are connected to, the ones that we feel deeply into, the ones that bring up deep emotions, and when we settle, settle into those on a regular basis, that's what creates our reality. And so this is going to go from, for us this year, I really believe we're on a path where we're going to be going from um, creating things um, in real time like that, that we, that are patterns for us, patterns of fear, patterns of lack, um, patterns of codependency, um, of, of unworthiness, these kind of things. We're going to really be able to start transmuting those in real time into the desires that we want, into oneness, into connection, into awareness of what's happening in our own minds because we are creators and so it's important that we can really start to focus in and hone in on those deep-seated emotional thoughts 
that happen on a regular basis and start pinpointing, sticking a pin in them, what they are. What is that for you? What is that thought that comes up? What is that thing that you relive that might happen? It might not even be something bad. You know what I mean? Like, sure, we have the ones that are fear, like our deepest fears, but I'm not even talking about that. Those usually come up when triggered, and it's not usually often if we're out of trauma. I mean the ones that happen on a daily basis, that happen so often, and sometimes we might not identify with them consciously. They run in the background, so we don't even realize that they're there. Those are the ones we need to really pin down and try to see if we can shift our reaction to that, and that shifts our frequency. That's how you raise your frequency. You are so right. I never thought of it as an, as an addiction. We're so used to it. We need to look at it a different way. Absolutely. This is all about changing our perspective, right? And so transformation is about changing that perspective of being able to shift that and be like, oh, because it's not an addiction like you think you need it. It's an addiction like your body's going to automatically jump to that, whether you're conscious of it or not. And where your body goes and your, and your feelings go, that's where your energetics are. And so if we're trying to vibrationally match something at a higher level, we have to learn how to bring up our frequency as well. And we vibrate at the frequency of thought and emotion. Those emotions and those thoughts were combined together, create an essence, um, a frequency that, that vibrates throughout our whole body. Um, all of energy is, is vibrating. It's a matter that's vibrating. And so it's the energetics behind um, behind um, changing, shifting, slight shifts. They don't even have to be big, huge shifts. It doesn't have to be from, you know, um, of course we want to go from lack lack mindset and lack mi uh, thinking to abundance thinking, but it doesn't have to be quite so extreme. It could just be as simple as instead of being like, oh, shit, and thinking that always happens. Like, um, say I spill my drink. It's This is something that I would do, like spilled a drink, tripped over something, dropping things a lot in a day to be like, things just never work out for me. Uh, or this is, uh, why is this always happening to me? Or here we go again, nothing ever actually goes the way it should go. Um, stuff like that, thoughts like that, that, they're not even fucking true. Those thoughts are not true. They might have been true in the past. They might have be true again in the future. But like the uh, it, it, the only way it's going to continue to happen in the future is if pretty much as if I, I fucking let let it happen. You know what I mean? Like things don't have to. That's not even true. Um, it's never. It's not true that all the time things aren't working out for me. That's that's silly. And why isn't things working out for me? Well, why aren't they working out for me? Because I'm not in alignment. Because I'm allowing myself to get frazzled by things that come up that appear as problems. They're not problems. They just need me to look at them. It's like trying to get your attention. Like, woohoo, over here. You need to get back in alignment. You need to take a couple deep breaths. Stop trying to do things too fast. Slow down to speed up. That's positive thinking. It's not. Positive thinking isn't what people think it is. A lot of people think that your thoughts have to always be positive. No, but we do need to learn how to pinpoint the ones that happen persistently that are that are bringing us down, that are negative, that are pulling us down. We're always going to think negative things because negative things are always going to go on. That's fine. We have polarity as a thing and we get to play both ends of that stick. That's part of this dual reality that we live in. There's nothing wrong with having a thought that is about something that's negative. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. What's wrong, what, what, what messes with manifestation for us and gets us all tripped up and getting in our way is when we allow it to become a pattern and then we, we do it unconsciously and subconsciously it runs as a program, you know? So it's not a problem to look at the outside world and be like, yeah, there's some seriously awful shit going on right now. Like we don't, we don't have to like sugarcoat things. We don't have to have this like toxic positive mindset and not actually, you know, it um, and not um, acknowledge reality. That's ridiculous. But what we do need to do is when it comes to us, and it's always with us, with, with a manifestation, a personal manifestations, it's always with your daily habits, your daily thoughts. It's the things that are happening all the time on a regular basis. If you can pinpoint those things that yank you back a little bit, those things that hold you back from opening up all the way, for going for the thing, that thought that always tells you, well, we can't do that. 
or how are we going to do it? How? How are we going to do that? How are we going to make that happen? Um, just because your mind is asking you those questions, just because there's something holding you back, those beliefs, that doesn't mean that it's right. And most of the time it's not right. So how are you going to do that? We don't have to know how. <laughs> we have to let go of that. We don't have to know how. You know? We need to just lean into belief. Into believing in magic. We say we believe in magic, right? Like that's what that's how I attract people to this group. That's how I speak in, in a lot of my messaging that I work with women who believe in magic. So do you believe in it? Or don't you believe in it? The universe is asking us right now, do we believe in this magic that we want for ourselves? Do we believe it? Does it align with who we really are? Do you really think you're a magical being? Do you believe that you can manifest the life that you desire? Do you believe that you really do create your own reality? Because I do. I do. And I don't have like this mansion and, uh, you know, all these other things that, that a lot of these people, um, which many are actually uh, renting cars and renting mansions and mini mansions to do videos and things like that on YouTube and other, you know, social media platforms. It's not even about that. It's about the on a daily basis. We're, we all have a threshold, you know what I mean? And we're working under our threshold. And I am intentionally going to be manifesting money for the first time in my life, life intentionally, in the month of February. The last time that I sat down and really intentionally tried to manifest something, well, the last couple times have been great, but I, I manifested my soulmate in, in a state where I knew nobody. I knew no one. Um, I manifested um, a, a job when I first, right at the end of the pandemic, one that I wasn't, that I was able to really do a lot of self work, personal work, development and, and growth on my own business while I was still getting paid. Then I manifested getting laid off so that I could build a business on unemployment. But I've never actually sat down and intentionally tried to manifest money. And so I'm doing this with you. <laughs> We're doing this together. Um, so this is really, um, there's a couple principles that I'm going to talk about um, coming up in, in the coming weeks uh, for our Living Magic Lessons. But um, one is the possibility that that idea of, do you believe it? Do you think it's possible? Do you think it's possible? Um, th it's making room for it, right? So making room for those miracles and those big manifestations to happen. Um, and this is akin to the idea of spiritual shopping, right? I bet I messed a vehicle with so many obstacles in the way. Yep. So I actually did too. <laughs> um, almost two years ago now. I did that as well. Shit credit, low income, no money down. Yeah. It took hours and hours and hours. <laughs> But it happened, uh, going back and forth with co-signers. Yeah, totally. You know, it may not look like magic. Like, that process did not look like magic. But magic was happening, and I didn't even need a co-signer. It wound up working out. Like, they wanted to take the co-signer, but believe it or not, it was Michael that was going to help me. And we had just started seeing each other. We were, like, maybe, I don't know, maybe a year in, or a little less. And, um... And I said, okay, like, uh, all right, I'll accept your help. <laughs> you know, I need the car. And so um, he couldn't prove his address because he had moved a couple times, like, in short succession. And so they couldn't take him as a cosigner. And so they approved it without a cosigner. And I was blown away. Six months. Yeah. It can take a longer time than we plan. That's because all the pieces had to fall into place to make it happen. And that's okay. That's what we call divine timing. Like sometimes th some things are going to take longer because we have to do the work, the foundational work to get there. Because if we don't, we might receive it and then not be able to hold it because we don't have the tools or the skills or the vibrational set point or the emotional maturity or whatever it might be. Like, if it's not happening for you, it's not that you're doing something wrong. It's just that there are still more steps to take on the journey. And you want 
to allow that to take the time that it takes because you don't want to get there and then lose it. You know, what would happen if, you know, that, you know, you weren't patient about it and you got yourself and you like forced it and went and got it through maybe a less reliable channel or whatever and it turned out to be a lemon or who knows you know not have the, the warranty that it was supposed to have or you know maybe it breaks down you know it's you know what I mean like you just don't know and so um, we really want to make room for the big we want to build belief systems that grow for us we want to start really putting investment time and energy into believing that it can happen and to believing in ourselves believing that we deserve it but not just like saying that we believe it and then like going on about our daily lives like fuck nothing ever works out for me when you spill something or drop something <laughs> like I used to that that shit's got to go because it's blocking the miracles and so I, I, am, I, I invite you to sit down and make room for the big things. Make room for miracles. Create a positive environment for these miracles to take place. Clean up. So say I want a beautiful wardrobe. Well, I'm going to clean out the ratty stuff, the stained things, the something that got ripped the something missing string or whatever and I'm and all that shit that I haven't worn I'm gonna go in my closet and I'm gonna pull out clothes that have been there for two years that I never wore and I know I'm not gonna wear and I'm gonna give them to charity and I'm gonna get them the hell out of my house so that I'm making room for this wardrobe that I'm asking for and that's physically and energetically that goes for both write down what the magical version of your life would look like Pick an area of your life, whatever it is, health, wealth, relationships. Pick one and write down detailed what that would look like for you. Know what that looks like. Know where you're going. And speak magic over your future. So when you talk about the future, talk about it in a positive light. Um, Abraham Hicks does this, um, teaches this process called... Um, uh, she used to call it segment um, planning or segment something but in any case it's about it's about like pre-writing the plan of how things or doing it in your mind of how the next scene in your life is going to play out and then watching it going through it in real time it's like I'm not gonna I'm, I'm, I'm say I'm on my way to go to go to work segment planning would be me picturing my ride to work before I get in the car of everything going smoothly and traffic not being in my way and hitting all the green lights and then getting there in one piece and safe with a smile on my face on time imagining that before it happens that that is segment planning and so it's this idea that you speak magic over your future that's another thing the words that we use the words we use are huge they call them they call it spelling because words are a spell now we have to of course agree to the meaning of the word in order for the magic to work but you know what you mean when you talk to yourself and that's all I need to say <laughs> and taking five minutes a day to sit and intentionally speak over your future write it down in the morning or say it out loud exactly what it is that you want just a few minutes a day picturing it writing it down or doing a visualization um, and saying the words saying it in po in present tense like as if you already have it so when you want to say uh, create an affirmation for yourself and you want to speak in present tense you want to use words like I have I am I allow you don't want to use I will or I could or you know future tense you want to use current tense and, and the easy part to get around the fact that saying you have something that you don't have and if that feels like too off to, for it to feel good you could always say I allow that's one of my favorites like I allow myself to make five grand a month in my business without having to 
bust my butt doing a whole bunch of stuff that I can't stand doing. <laughs> and, and, and I almost believe it's true. <laughs> so that's uh, pretty much the end. Um, the, the soul work, the suggestion for this week's lesson, the soul, the soul work, I call it, the activity that you could do is to write down um, what, ma what the magical version of one of your life areas will look like when you get there. Um, three to five years from now is a really good way. Just pick an area of your life, your, your romantic relationship. Three, three years down the line, five years down the line, what does that look like? And it's in its most beautiful form. What does that look like for you? And <coughs> to really <coughs> go over that once a day. Just even reread what you write, you know, once a day and just visualize it for five minutes. So that is the homework. Um, and yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this video out and I'm going to pop back on live in like a minute and a half. I just want to charge my laptop and grab my tarot cards and then we'll get into the reading. This way I can upload this video to the guide section to go with the Living Magic lessons. Okay, so I'll be back in like a minute and a half. I'll see you guys soon. L uh, make room for magic in your life. Expect it. Expect magic. Expect miracles. I love you.